What's going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond, and this is weird, right? I'm in a car. This is not normally where I record. That's because I'm out of town for a little bit, and I got to meet up with my boy, Sinister Matrix, who is yep. beside me. Yeah, so if you see my shoulder, that's me, but that's about as much you're going to get right now. <laughs> it's a shoulder reveal. He didn't want to do a face reveal, so he's still here. He's beside me, yeah. but it's a, it's a shoulder reveal. John conned me into it. <laughs> So uh, I think the plan is to do a little bit of BCA CTF. Uh, he'll kind of be co-piloting and tag teaming along. We'll go through one of the challenges, and I'll try and pop some questions like, hey, man, what do you think? What do you feel like? What would we do here? Have you seen this before? Stuff like that. Yeah, I'll so, kind of uh, throw my two cents in as it, as it applies. Cool. This is super cool. This is super weird. This is super fun. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so the challenge that I want to take a look at, by the way, we're in a car, right? So I'm not really able to download some of the stuff. Uh, we are tethering right now, just using a mobile hotspot. But I want to showcase, this is the web page. It says, this challenge for the manner of speaking. So though I came across the theorist of the instructions, <laughs> I can't even do this. I can't, I can't give this good justice. Uh, the key is the attached list of ASCII printables. Though anyways, here's the instructions. So we have two files to download, instructions and printables, <laughs> and I guess we have to roll with them. So I'll showcase what these are, so Sinister can see them. And this one is called printables, <laughs> and it looks like these, which I'm assuming are just printable characters. Right? Yeah, pretty much everything from all your random special characters, anything through alphabetical, alphanumerical. Are there any numerics in there? Yeah, yep. I see some numbers in the front there. And the other one is instructions, which, at first glance, I would not know what this is. Cadatter. That looks, that looks fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this game was pretty generous. You could receive hints if you wanted to, um, and they wouldn't actually damage you. They wouldn't actually detract some points. So, we can... And I don't have any shame in taking hints. I don't know about you. So this hint says, pardon my lisp. What do you think that's getting at? <laughs> do I want to spoil that already? I mean, yeah, I? for sure. We can go for that logical jump. I can go for that logical jump. Well, there's only one programming language I can think yeah. that even remotely sounds like that. <laughs> so we're looking at lisp, right? Yeah. Think of Mike Tyson. There you go. <laughs> Man with a lisp. Backthalithes in printable.txt are escaped characters. Okay, so that looks like it has something that's actually escaped, and we need to go ahead and, like, unescape that. I can do that pretty easily in Python, right? Like, if we were to consider this a string, thankfully there's no other double quotes in there, it'll just print those out. And some of those... Looks like some of those, not all of those are... are, are Looks like escaped. some of them escaped. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to take a note of another file here. I'll call this, like, uh, not escaped or whatever. And we'll just put that in there. And the instructions, now that I kind of have an inkling that this is Lisp, I know there are other instructions like catter, or I'm sorry, car and cutter in Lisp, which... I would showcase on the internet if I could, but I don't think I can. CDR Lisp. Car and CDR. These are primitive operations within the Lisp programming language. So it lets us determine kind of specific pieces or notions of uh, where they are in... I'm doing a horrible job of explaining this. <laughs> anyway, I was able to... Uh, note that, okay, that means this is Lisp, right? And the only things that I saw that kind of seem really strange in this is a number of changing Ds. Yeah. There's CAD editor, CAD with two Ds, etc., etc. So, looking back at our not escaped, again knowing that this is Lisp, Lisp works with a lot of parentheses, and it looks like this starting parenthesis matches that ending parenthesis. So if I were to try and like beautify this, it looks like there are segments of different groupings of characters, right? If 
forgot one. Yeah, this guy down here. So space, exclamation point, etc., etc., etc. And then I guess we can remove those to get the parentheses in there just fine. Uppercase letters. And those curly braces we can escape out. Lowercase letters. And th look, that looks like a set that might correspond to these Ds here. So we know that the flag format for this game is BCACTF. So is there any notion of how we could get a B given that? <laughs> or a C or an A or whatever? The gimmick is that this number of Ds, the that that set, refers to the number down in the set that we're looking at. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. D is in that case. This is the first set. This is the second set. So third, we're going down to the fourth, fifth set of fifth. characters. Yeah. Now we can keep in mind this is probably going to be zero based. So this will actually be where we're at. True. And if we were zero based, that other D being 1 would mean... 0 and 1. So we could get a B, and then looking at the next letter, or the next whatever that is, we have two Ds in the same amount of the second set. So we know, okay, that will bring us to a C. And this one is actually missing the Ds in the very front. So okay, we can track down that's going to be an A, right? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So now... Our priority is actually ripping through these and creating a script to be able to carve out the flag like that. I would think of it like points on a graph, putting each special character in its own point and then taking the amount of Ds that we have to specify which point that character that we're looking for is at. That's a cool Fair way enough? of saying it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a cool way of saying it. So... Let's make all of those. This is a cool trick that I learned in Sublime Text, where you can select multiple cursors. If you have any text selected and you hit Control, Shift, and L, it'll multiply your number of cursors, and then you'll have that many, and you can write in as many lines as you need to, which is a very cool trick. So I'll do that one more time, because I want to get all those commas added in. And I need to escape that double quote there. So now in Python, we have sets that we can use. And let's get this guy as well. What I'll do is, as a quick trick, I'll replace all the commas with a new line. And then I'll get rid of all those spaces. And then we can just as easily again add those commas and quotes in. So now when I replace new lines with a single space, I have a quick and easy list. Um, we'll call it like info. Woo. And now we have all that information in there. So what we can do is for P and info or whatever, we can print out that P and see what we're working with. I'll turn off the build view so that way we can see it down displayed here. And now we need to actually carve out these Ds, right? So we can figure out where we're going and how we're going to extract that. I'm going to do that with regular expressions so that way I can get the correct number. Let's import re. So let's use re.findall and let's get every occurrence of the D that we can in P. So let's print how many we've got here. Okay. Maybe I should have kept build view on so you can see that a little bit better. So, in the cases where we have 1D or no D, in the cases where we actually have Ds that will represent the letter that we're reaching at or the index in that set, those actually have a separate empty string in the way, because that would be the A character. But if we didn't have that, like, there's no D is in that set of that third index there. We don't have that fourth empty string. It just goes straight to that set. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like, that gap, what would be 
there on that next line is missing. Yeah, it's basically a big separator. Yeah. Since we don't have that, because the A's are all together now, and there's no D at all, we miss it. So we need to keep track of that zero, though, because that's going to refer to that segment. So I'm going to do a little if statement and test there. We can test... Um, so letter choice, or whatever variable you want to give it, will actually be 0, 1, 2, the second index of these pieces. Zero, one, two, right? Yeah. So if we actually have a letter choice and it's not an empty string, then that means the set choice, zero, one, two, three, four, pieces four. If we don't and letter choice is an empty string, then we know, okay. It will be index set zero. E zero, one, two, three, four. Did I miss something? How did that go wrong? Uh, it's because I put that there. It's because I added that in. Yeah. So it should that be... That index zero, three. One, two, three. You're right. Totally right. Cool. Okay. So now, all we need to do is, from our sets, give the right index, and then give the right letter index. So let's print out from the sets. Let's get the right set choice. And that actually, remember, is the length of this. So we'll actually pass that in. So now that'll index whether or not we're going to be using numbers, letters, etc. So that 5 will get us this. And then we can index that. So another set of square braces following it because we're going to be returned this string, and we need to get a specific position in that string. In that string. Yeah. So let's use our letter choice. And again, that's a length. So let's see what nonsense we get. BCACTF blah, 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 blah. Let's see if we can just go ahead and create a flag from that. I'll make it as a list, and we'll go ahead and put it together. So flag.append. All of that. In the very, very end, we can print out that flag joined together. Oh. I totally dropped. Yep. That join goes after Yeah. The <laughs> there we go. List programming is awesome. List programming, whatever. Uh, I don't remember if I need to end up changing these to underscores. But most, I would think most flag formats do the underscore yeah. bit. Let me actually check, because I... Did they include that character in there? I believe so. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe we removed the underscore on accident. Or because I had some extra line in here, I think I removed that extra backslash that should have been in there. So now if I run that, did it change at all? Let me see what my save flag is. It was in uh, programming. And then, manner of speaking, the flag that I ended up submitting was with those underscores. So how did we lose it? We must have somewhere. In the instructions? No. Now it would be the... Printables. It's this guy. And we lost him somehow. Yeah, I think we lost one. We lost one character in there. Let's let's give it the raw form and see if it gives it to me the correct way. Nope. Now I lose. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That doesn't. That doesn't immediately explain the backslash, but whatever. I'll trust it. <laughs> so that's that's that flag. Does that all make sense? How we kind of came to that conclusion from the weird catter, cadatter, and the strange printable string? you got to keep in mind that it's a lisp, so that way you're able to kind of segment out these sections, because the lisp uses those parentheses all as groups and as, as things that they're putting together. It sounds like we need to make a tutorial series on lisp. Yeah.
<laughs> I haven't worked too much with Lisp, but you know, basic understandings going into a lot of programming languages are separated. Yeah. With parentheses a lot of the time, so just knowing that will help will help you kind of understand where to break things off. When uh, I was in high school, we had an advanced studies program, which was like some, which was like summer school for nerds that wanted to go do more school. <laughs> Um, but it was at, a, it was at a, a different school. It was like a private school, a little bit fancy, schmancy, bougie place. Um, but I took a class in artificial intelligence, and it was all about using Lisp because it was able to be introspective. Like it can use the eval function. It can open itself up as a, as a script in a program just because it's a scripting language. But uh, super cool. That is how you solve that challenge. I hope that was kind of neat and kind of cool. I hope this makes sense. And uh, all right. That ties it up. That wraps it up. Yep, pretty much wraps everything up. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you guys for watching. If you did like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. I would love to see you guys in the Discord server. There is a link in the description. You can hang out with me and Sinister Matrix, yep. the shoulder man himself. <laughs> and uh, I'd love to see you on Patreon. love to see you on PayPal. Thanks so much for all your support. But, uh, love ya. <laughs>